Deep in a terrible forest, Mr. Wolf was hungry. He hadn't eaten in a few hours. His stomach was growling so loudly that it scared birds away. Grumble. Mr. Wolf took a deep breath. P.U. He was so hungry that his stomach was so empty that he had the rottenest breath in the world. Even he was grossed out by it. Brush your teeth, some unseen creature shouted from up in a tree. Mr. Wolf blushed. He couldn't help his bad breath. Instead, he thought about why he took that food. Snacking on squirrels and mice just wasn't enough. And for that, about rooting around under logs for bugs, slugs, and millipedes. They did nothing for him and they were slimy. He even thought about eating his own earwax, but he tried that before. He needed a meal. This is where things started to get grim. The wolf knew that right on the edge of the forest, Mrs. Doak's house was filled with seven lovely, juicy, chunky little kids that were ready to be doubled up. As he thought about those jokes, he started to drill. A steady steam of clear city drool trickled from his mouth and hit the forest floor. The drill was so awful that it rotted the grass. At the wolf's feet. But before Mr. Wolf set out to the goats, he needed to sharpen his teeth a bit. After all, goats are tough. He got his fowl out and sharpened each tooth until it was as pointy as a tag. Then he happily stepped out of his shed. He got his bike from the shed and remembered to put some air in the back tire. Mr. Wolf paddled down the path through the thick trees, singing a happy song to himself. Dots, dots, delicious dots. I'm gonna eat those dots. I'm gonna eat those dots. When he got to the edge of the forest, he parked his bike against a tree. Mrs. Dot's car wasn't in the driveway. He could hear the kids inside singing and jumping around. This was going to be a piece of cake. He ate them all up and then he'd go home and take a nap. He tiptoed to the door. He turned the knob. It was locked. Fiddlesticks, the wolf whispered, flinging the door open, running in and stirring his dinner before eating it was his favorite way to prepare a meal. He knocked on the door, all noise inside stopped. Finally, some who stopped, clopped up to the door. Who is it? Someone talked from inside. Ahem. The wolf cleared his throat. It's your mummy, he said. I lost my teeth. Won't you please let me in? Your voice sure sounds weird, the goat said. I've got a sore throat, the wolf said. You know, allergies. Hurry up and let me in. It's cold out here. And then the wolf's empty stomach rumbled loudly. Brr. What's that noise? asked the goat. Just a little gas, vouched the wolf. Sounds like a fart to me. It's gas. Now open up and let me inside, cried the wolf. If it's our mother, what are all our names? the goat called. Mr. Wolf was stunned. He started making up names. Lucretia, Giuseppe, Kitty, Mallory. I knew it, the goat yelled. You are the wolf. Mr. Wolf heard a noise and looked up. A buttered 
hung from a string above his head. Now, one of the teeth strike. The bucket flipped over, emptying a dozen eggs on top of the of Mr. Wolf's head. He brushed yolks and slime away from his eyes, and he stomped away, stinky and sticky. I'll get those teeth if it's the last thing I do, he snarled.